Hey creative heads, welcome to yet another exciting video from Simply Learn. Whether you are a seasoned designer or just stepping into the designing world, Figma is a powerful tool that streamlines the prototyping process, bringing your ideas to life. Did you know that most of the UI UX designers use Figma as their primary tool? The usage of Figma by designers grew by 42% in the last few years and 89% of the users recommend the tool to their fellow designers. Tech giants like Microsoft and Google use Figma to enhance their creative productivity. So, what's stopping you from learning this trending tool? Walk with me through this video to learn the features, tips and tricks of Figma prototyping and stick around as we will be giving you a hands-on demo for your clear understanding. But before we begin... Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast-track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. If you're looking forward to becoming a UI UX expert, join our immersive UI UX certification program and become an expert in just five months. The course offers live online classes led by renowned faculty from IIIT Bangalore. Get hands-on with capstone projects, craft your portfolio on Dribble, and receive personalized coaching on top designer tools. And the best part? Simply Learn's job assistance is here to support your journey every step of the way. Enroll now and unlock endless possibilities in the realm of UI UX design. Check out the course link in the description box and the pinned comments. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, what is Figma? Figma is a UX design tool where people create, share, and test website, mobile apps, and product designs. It is widely used by designers, product managers, and developers. It allows multiple people to work together at the same time and share feedbacks. It is a completely free tool. In this video, we will be covering Figma prototyping. So let's first see what is prototyping and why do we need it. So prototyping is basically a blueprint of what your website or mobile apps design looks like before it is built. We can actually show our team members our idea of how we expect the website or app to look like and how to navigate between pages even before the real product is built. Isn't it cool? It helps us to save money, time, and we can get instant feedback from our teammates. We can test the prototype to see what the end result might look like and can also share the creative prototypes with others. So I hope you got an idea about what prototyping is. So in Figma prototyping, we will cover what are flows, connections, how to create interaction and animations between different frames. We will go through the settings in prototype and finally see how to present and share our prototype. So basically we create frames to represent the pages and use it like a canvas. Each page is designed in different frames. A flow is like a map of all the different parts and how they connect on one page or a different page of your app or website. A prototype can show either the whole journey a user might take through your app or just a small part of it. For example, imagine your prototype is for a quiz app. You might have parts that show the options, skip questions or continue to next question. Figma creates a flow starting point when you add your first connection between two frames. Now. Let's see how to create connections. Connections are nothing but interactions like clicking a button to go to another page, clicking an icon to open an overlay page, etc. A connection has three parts, hotspot, connection, and destination. Hotspot is where the interaction happens or starts. For example, a button. Connection is the arrow that connects the hotspot to the destination. Destination is where the hotspot leads us to like another page or a pop-up, etc. So to create an interaction, select the hotspot from where you want to start the interaction. Go to the prototype tab on the right side, after which you will see a plus icon on the frame hotspot that you selected. After that, you can drag plus sign arrow to the destination and thus you have created a connection. Now, as this is done, you might have noticed that while using apps, the destination pages does not appear instantly. There are some animations and transitions involved when the next page appears. Let's now see how that's done. For that, you can go to the prototype tab where you will find add interactions and you can change the interaction settings as you like. 
We will be showing all this in detail during the demo. Now that you are creating a prototype, how do you present it to others and share it? There are options in prototype setting where you can choose the device you would like to view your prototype on. And once you have created the prototype, there is a present button on the top right side of the toolbar, which takes you to another tab where you can view the prototype on the device you have selected. So after you have viewed the prototype, you will find the share prototype button on that same tab. You can set the necessary parameters and share the link. So here we have covered an overview of the main components of Figma prototyping. Now let's see a hands-on demo on how to create and share a prototype. Okay, so let's start with the demo. So this is basically a prototype that I created. This is a very simple prototype. Okay, just to show the important features. So this is how you can view it. You know, you can scroll the website and when I press the ethnic button, you can see the page that contains ethnic words. You can go select the back option. You again go back to the main page. And see, this is the page for XYZ collections website. So when I press over there, you can see an overlay page that appears which says welcome. And again, when I press the top right side, the overlay closes. Okay, so now this is a very basic prototype. Now I'll be teaching you how to create a prototype, you know, including the frames, connections and everything. So let's get started. So this is how your Figma playground will look like. As I told you, this is a free tool. So you can actually log in, you know, create an account and log in using your Gmail ID yeah, or any email ID. So this is your playground. So here, this is the tool toolbar. So first you'll see how to create a frame. So this is a frame. You create a frame. Yeah. And you can select which device you would like to view your prototype in. So I'm selecting iPhone 18. So frame is been formed with a resolution of iPhone 18. So now let's see how to add the shapes. So in this tab, you can see many shapes. We'll add a rectangle. So you can go to design part in the upper right co corner where you can change the color of the shape. So we'll keep it red. We can also change the color of the frame. Okay, here, but then let's keep it white. Yeah, so we are going to the square. Okay, and also we can add a text, text box. Uh, now I'm just mentioning it as header. Again, the text box here, you can, you know, change the font size, font style. You know, you can align it. Okay, you can just explode this over here. After that, I'll be creating few more shapes to give it a website-like view. So here we are not creating any website. So we're just creating shapes to understand the basics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, or what we can do is you can actually, you know, copy this shape, control C and control V, you can paste it. So we get the shape with the exact dimension. Now, if we go and look at the presentation of this particular prototype, let's wait for a second. Yeah, so this is how it appears, right? So it's not scrolling or anything. So to add a vertical scrolling, what you can do is you can actually select the frame. You can elongate the frame. Yeah. You can elongate the frame, select the shapes, place it over here, elongate it further, or oh, just a second, yeah, elongate it further, yeah. Now you can see that we are able to scroll vertically, but then I want this header to stay fixed. So what shall we do for that? For that, we'll select the header and the text, right? And we'll group it with Control G. So now we'll take the header. We'll go to prototype. Here in scroll behavior, right now it's scrolled with parent. So we'll go and make it fixed, okay? Now you can see that the header doesn't move. The header stays, stays fixed. So here's how, this is how you create a fixed component. So now we have seen how to create a fixed component and how to scroll the elements vertically. Now let's see how to scroll the elements horizontally. Yeah. For that, what you can do is, again, we are just elongating the frame. Okay. Now we are creating shapes outside the frame. Yeah. Control C, Control V. We are just adding a few elements. Yeah. Now what you can do is you can select everything right click yeah and do frame selection so now this is a complete frame 
Now what you can do is you can bring the frame here and squeeze this. Now here in the prototype you can see overflow. Right now it's no scrolling. Select horizontal scrolling. Now see, you can vertically scroll. Also when this part appears, you can horizontally scroll. So this is how you do vertical scrolling and horizontal scrolling. See, apart from shapes, you can even add pictures like how I added in my prototype. So just go to the shapes and here there's a place image or video option which will directly take you to the to your file manager and you can upload the pictures from there. Okay, now let's see how to add connections. So for adding connections, we need another page, right? Or another frame. So again, we'll create a frame, iPhone 8 frame, okay? It's 8 frame and we are just, you know, we'll just change the color of the page or the frame. We'll just give it yellow for a better understanding, okay? Now, I what I want is, I want this yellow page to appear while I click the first box, okay? Uh, yeah, while I click the first box. So for that, what I can do is I can click the box. Yeah, go to prototype in the right corner. So now when I hover over this, there is a plus sign appearing. I can drag the plus sign arrow towards this page. Now let's see what happens. Now when I click this first box, the yellow page appears. But while I click the rest of the box, nothing happens. See, nothing happens. Okay. Now, as you, as I've already told, there are, we can add interactions because right now the yellow page is just suddenly appearing, instantly appearing out of nowhere. So for that, what you can do is you can actually, you know, click over here in this arrow where you can actually, you know, do a dissolve or there are numerous options. You know, there is sliding. Like for example, let's take sliding, you know, sliding from the top. Now let's see how this appears. See, the page is sliding in from the top. Okay, so you can, you know, explore all these features. I'm just explaining just one of the features. There are so many features to be, you can explore. Now, let me teach you how to create an overlay frame. Okay, now overlay, I think you know what overlay is. It's a text box or like any box that appears above the page. It's a comparatively smaller box. So for that, what you have to do is, you have to create a frame. Okay, you have to create another frame. Yeah, sorry, you have to create an other frame, but that frame must be smaller because it's an overlay. Overlay is always smaller than the page. So the overlay frame page must be smaller in size than the other frames, right? So here I'll just add a text saying, hey, yeah. So now what I can do is, okay, I want this to appear, this particular overlay to appear while I press the second box. So now I can actually build a connection. Just a second. Yeah, build a connection. Now instead of navigate, right? I want it as an open overlay. So click the overlay option. Okay, so see, an overlay box appeared. Now you want to close the overlay. So for that, what you will do is you can actually go to the same connection. You can click the connecting arrow where you can find these settings. You can actually press Close when clicking outside. Okay. So now when I click anywhere in the page, it goes back. Overlay appears. When I click anywhere in the page, the overlay goes back. Right. So this is how you open and close an overlay. So these are the frames. So there are so many options and interactions and animations. So an interesting one is smart animation. Now smart animation is something which is different. So it smart animation basically looks for matching layers and it recognizes differences and animates layers between frames in a prototype. Okay. So I will just give you an example of what smart animation is. So see smart animation is basically done while you toggle, while you want to use a toggle button or you know, while you want to delete an email while sliding the email off. All those options are done through smart animation. So I'll just give you the toggle example. So for toggling, what we can do is, we can actually add a shape. We can add a shape. Mm, we can just, you know, curve the size. 50. Yeah. Now you can add a button. I like for the toggle button, you can add an ellipse. An elliptical frame. Yeah. Okay, you can color. You can give a black color to it. 
okay so you know this is how a toggle button looks right like right yeah now what you have to do is you have to recreate the same frame this exact same frame so you can do control c and control v so this thing appears now here what you want is you want this uh, yeah you want this button to go to the right side when you click right yeah so initially this will be your page and while you click this button you want this button to go to the right side now how to make that connection or build that connection select here okay go to prototype you got a red connection oh just a second i'm sorry so what you can do is you can press this plus sign navigate to this page yeah so here go to the settings and for animation give smart animation okay you can give it's already six easy in enough and initially while you are doing it might be 300 milliseconds so you can increase this to 600 milliseconds for a smooth transition now again do it for this side too connection smart animation so let's see how this is done yeah see this it's very smooth actually we have created two frames over here but then you know it doesn't feel that the pages are changing, right? It's very smooth, how you usually toggle on your apps or websites. So, you know, for such interactions or for such animations, we use smart animations, as I already mentioned for deleting the email and everything. So that's it what, with the smart animations. So we have actually covered, you know, the main features. I mean, there are so many features which you can actually, you know, explore, but it's all similar. So the main features we have covered over here, so what to do for presenting? Now we have to present and share it. So for presenting, as we have already been presenting, so this is the present icon. So you can present it and we have already selected the device as iPhone 8. So this is your iPhone 8 and like all the features, you know, the scrolling upwards, scrolling sideways, overlay, toggle with smart animation everything's appeared now how to share it so see here also you will find a share button here in this particular tab also you will find a share button okay so for sharing the prototype you are supposed to share the prototype from this particular tab from the view tab okay so select share prototype now what you can do is you can just copy the link and share it okay but then again you can do the necessary settings like if you just want the stakeholders you know to just see your prototype you can keep it in can view but then if you you know if you're doing a group project and if you want the teammates to also edit you can go to the edit option okay and again here you have another option of who all can view the link so like you can choose the option according to your purpose and you can copy the link and share it so with that we come to an end to this session Hope you guys got a quick idea on what Figma tool is and how to use its prototype features. We have explained to you the important features that will get you started. Now, it is your turn to be creative and create an interactive prototype. Take your time, explore the features once again and come up with an exciting one. Do let us know in comment section once you are done. Also, drop your doubts or questions in the comment section if any. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Simply Learn's YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.